Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one, I'll show you how to make these fantastic little corner buns. They're absolutely ideal for sandwiches. They're soft, they're light and delicious. And as they're extremely easy and relatively quick to make, I always make a double batch to keep my freezer well stocked with these delicious little corner buns. And once you've tasted these, you'll do exactly the same. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Okay, as always, I'll start by testing that my yeast is alive and well. First, add the sugar to the warm milk and water and mix until the sugar's dissolved. And now add your yeast to the water and give that a good mix too. Right, set that aside until it activates. If there's no change after 10 minutes, your yeast must be dead and it needs replacing. OK, it's 10 minutes later and as you can see, my yeast is very active and ready to go. Now, as my arthritic right hand is no better, once again I'm having to use my stand mixer. But as this is only a 62% hydration dough, this recipe can be easily hand kneaded. First off, I'll add the liquid to the bowl. Next to go in is the softened butter. In goes the white bread flour. Finally, add the salt. If you are mixing this by hand, add everything to a bowl. Mix it all together. Turn it all out onto your worktop and hand knead the dough for at least 10 minutes until you have a nice smooth dough. Right, I'll bring that all together. Once everything's combined, I'll knead the dough for 10 minutes. And this is what the dough looks like after 5 minutes. And there you go, after 10 minutes the kneading is done. Right, whether you've hand kneaded or machine kneaded your dough, get the dough onto a non-floured surface. Form the dough into a ball. Now add your dough ball to a lightly oiled bowl. Cover the bowl, I like to use the shower cap for mine and these are available in different patterns and colours in the website shop if you're interested. Now get the bowl into a nice warm spot. I like to use the oven with just the light bulb on. Whichever warm spot you keep in your dough in, allow it to proof for 45 minutes. Once the time's up, turn your now risen dough out onto a non-floured surface once more. Now knock the dough back. That simply means get all of the built up gas out of it. Once you've knocked it back, form the dough into a ball again. Now we need to divide the dough into three equal pieces. Right, if your measurements were correct at the beginning, your dough should weigh around 830 grams. That's just over 29 ounces. A quick calculation and each piece needs to be 277 grams or 9.7 ounces. But try to work in grams, it's so much easier guys. Once you've got all three weighed off, form each piece into a ball. Once all three are made, let them relax for five minutes. This will make it so much easier to roll them out. Now, lots of viewers have mentioned in the comments that they're having great trouble rolling pastry out evenly. 
but this special high quality stainless steel rolling pin is the answer. The rolling pin allows you to roll the dough out to a precise thickness perfectly and consistently. It has different size spaces on each end, varying from thick to very thin, so it's virtually impossible to get it wrong. I'm so impressed with these pins that I've added them to the website shop. And for this recipe I'm using the 3 8 or 10 mm spacer. After the 5 minutes rest, sprinkle a little flour over your work area. Get your rolling pin ready, with the 10 mm spacer on in my case. If for some strange reason you don't have one of these fantastic rolling pins, you'll just have to use an ordinary rolling pin and guess when you're at the right thickness. Place one of the dough balls in the middle of the flour and give it a light dusting. Now roll the dough out. Keep making quarter turns in the dough as you go and this will keep the dough reasonably round. Once it won't roll any further, set it aside and do the same for the other two. Now let all three relax for a further five minutes. For this recipe you'll need two large greased baking trays. The dimensions of the trays that I'm using are on screen. Once your dough discs have been relaxing for five minutes, give them another quick roll. Using your bench scraper once more, carefully cut the disc into four quarters. Now place the four quarters onto your prepared baking tray. Keep the pieces well apart, you don't want these blending into each other as they rise. Ideally you want six on each tray. To stop them from sticking to the proofing cloth, give each piece a light dusting of flour. Once you have all 12 dough pieces on the trays, cover them with a dry, lightweight cloth and get them into a warm spot to proof. They'll need approximately 30 minutes to proof. Mine's going back into the oven with just the light bulb on for the first 20 minutes. I'll finish the last 10 minutes off on the bench while the oven heats up. Right, that's the first 20 minutes of my proofing time done. I'll let them sit on the bench now for a further 10 minutes, because I need to get my oven preheated. When you have only 10 minutes left on your proofing time, preheat your oven to 170 Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. And as you can see, with 10 minutes still left on the rise, mine are proofing nicely. Right, I'll let them proof a little more while we're waiting for the oven. Right, it's 10 minutes later and the oven is up to temperature, so it's time to start baking these beauties. Ok, in they go. Now I won't show it in the video, but I will be turning the trays and swapping the shelves halfway through for even baking. Right, once you get them in, set your timer for 20 minutes. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. OK, time's up and they're done. And they look and smell absolutely delicious. I hope you can see that they've sprung very nicely in the oven. They're soft, light as a feather and a lovely colour. Not too dark, not too light. Right, I let them cool for a few minutes on the wire rack and when I come back I'll let you see what they're like on the inside and of course have a little taste. Okay, it's only been 10 minutes and I can't wait any longer. 
Inside it does a soft and light close crumb, an ideal bread for sandwiches. So I've decided to knock up one of my favourite sandwiches of all time and that's the BLT, bacon, lettuce and tomato. I'll start with a good helping of mayo. On goes lettuce, some nice juicy vine tomatoes and lots of my home cured still sizzling streaky bacon. Oh boy, the smell in my kitchen. And here we go. And that is so good. A perfect sandwich for these delightful little corner buns. Definitely worthy of a massive thumbs up. You have to try this one, guys. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Cheryl Bowen, Kate Shepard, Wesley Matson, Laurie Hubblebank, Brown Mike, Cheryl McCormick, Alana Lewis, Karen Tabor, Darren Hickey, Shannon, Charlene Slater, Jen Toblin, Phil Ball, Roxanne, TC Robo Jesus, Channel Daniels 594, Captain Express, and Jens K3250. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.